Caleb Nost joining us from thehoosier.com. Uh, also brought to you by our uh, friends down at the uh, Courtroom Sports Grill at uh, Bedford. How's it going, brother? It's going well. Going well. Just staying busy. Just, you know, ready for football. We're not too far from basketball. Things about to pick up. Yeah. Um, it it kind of needs to pick up for Indiana. It, it The recruiting had been going, um, I'd say, well, for Indiana. Things look, looked good. They, they got a lot of visits in. And uh, they look to be in really, really good shape with Jamie Kaiser. But then when Maryland got that second visit, I, and I said, uh, I, I said, I think Indiana's in good shape there as long as Maryland doesn't get another visit. Right. And as soon as they get that last visit, you're like, yeah, no, they're not going back a second time. And as soon as that happened, I knew that was over. A uh, little surprising. They also end up getting Sean Harris Smith. So Maryland is coming out of kind of nowhere and putting together one hell of a class um, because then they're not the only guys they've gotten. But Maryland's kind of wrecking Indiana's plans a little bit. Yeah, it's one of those things. I mean, it's like when Archie Miller first got to Indiana, you know, he pulled, you know, a top, what, five or seven class nationally, and it was basically all Indiana kids. The DMV's not that different, right? Kevin Willard's a first-year coach at Maryland. He's had success at Seton Hall. He's a good coach. Um, you know, the DMV is, like I said, it's a similar, it's regional, you know, all those kids that we're talking about, were all from that area. Um, it's not shocking that they chose Maryland. It did seem like Indiana was in really good shape and Kenya Hunter having ties on the East coast really seemed like it would put us in a good position, but you know, at the end of the day, Maryland was able to convince them to stay home. Um, they already had another kid that plays team Durant, Jonathan Lamothe, that's in that area that was in their ears a lot recruiting for Maryland as well. So yeah, they all decided to stay home. So now it's now it's on to who's next. Well, a little bit of pressure. I don't want to say pressure, but um, <clears throat> great recruiting class last year. There's pressure to follow that up. Now you've got Gabe Cups and Ja'Kai Newton coming in, um, but they've got open scholarship spots, and it's you know you, you start leaving scholarship spots blank that gets me back into this Archie Miller thing Well, he talks about banking scholarships, but he was banking them because he couldn't get anybody to take them, the people he wanted to take them. That, and that's not the case here, but will they, will they sign someone in this class for certain? I mean, they, they've got probably going to have what, two, two more spots to fill. Yeah. If, Par <laughs> if, if Barrington Page doesn't come. They're going to, I mean, they're going to get someone. I mean, it's just a, it's a matter of who, right? I mean, Tom Crean filled spots with guys like Peter Jerkin, right? Spots well, are, they're going to get but, filled, but. But that's how Indiana got in trouble though, because right, he was right. started giving away scholarships to people that, that should not have been given scholarships to, to Indiana. Right. Uh, so if, he, if Page, if they don't get Aaronson Page, they're going to the portal. I mean, there's nobody, there, it's slim pickings for bigs in the class of 23 as it is. Um, so it wouldn't shock me even if they get Aaronson Page that they dip into the portal as well because they're going to need some depth in the front court. You know, Logan Duncan and Malik Renu and, and Aaronson Page probably isn't enough, to be honest. I mean, within the, depending on how Renu progresses this season, you know, and Duncan, what he looks like at the end of the year, that might not be enough if, even if they do get Aaronson Page. So, you know, they're probably going to have to go to the portal either way. Um, I think they're done with 23 besides Aaronson Page, you know, aside from anybody they try to get out of the transfer portal. So, uh, if, if we're thinking transfer portal, though, like I said, they're going to end up well, – will there not be – let's say Page comes to Indiana. Will that not still leave two <clears throat> available spots? I think that leaves one. Um, it kind of depends on who leaves. I think we – I think – Based on well, what you know, Xavier Johnson's gone, Trace is gone, Race is gone. Um, who else? Um, uh, Miller Cop. Miller Cop's gone. So there's four, and then you then a potential someone potentially hitting a portal. But sure. So we're looking at two spots still open. Um, if Page comes, we'll have one. Anybody else that leaves, you know, we go beyond one open. So, um. You know, I think they were really hoping to get a TJ Power kind of kid and an Arrington Page, you know, have a four-man class here. Just hasn't worked out that way. You know, um, 
2024 is looking like a much more national recruitment. Um, they're heavy on McNeely, as we know, he's coming in September. Um, Asa Newell is a kid that they're really heavy after that's been on campus. They've recruited or they've offered a ton of four and five star talent in the class of 24, but it's just not a ton of um, not a ton of in-state talent, you know, coming out of that class. Kane and Ketchings, they're looking at a little bit, but I don't think he's got an offer yet. So, you know, I think they're going to call it a wrap on the 23 before too long. Um, they're going to be heavy for Paige see what they can piece together at the end of the season from the portal as well. Um, not to sound like it's a last resort. They're still in good shape. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know they're going to have four four-star players in the front court, but <clears throat> they, um, I think they're going to, they're looking, their sights are set on 24 and even into the t- class of 25 now. Um, I think you're going to see maybe for that North Carolina, maybe some football weekends and for that big North Carolina matchup in November, whoever's on campus those times might be who they're really serious about at this time. Um, I did see a new offer it goes out to a 2024, uh, point guard, uh, paint. Yeah. I feel like it's probably not as simple to pronounce that name as we're, <laughs> I think Dink Pate might be, we may be oversimplifying it. I don't know. I don't know how to, no, it, it is Dink Pate. Is it? I like it easy. I like, I, I like, I like Dink. it too. I just, Dink's a I don't, great name. <laughs> I don't want to get hear, it wrong. I, I, all, I can hear Don Fisher right now. Jalen yeah. Jafino over to Dink Pate here for three. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, he's Dink uh, Pate. Dink Pate. It's easy to say. Boom, 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 boom. Rivals has got him number twenty-one in the country. I think we're a little late in the game. He's already got twenty-something high major offers, but it's never too late for you know if you can get him on campus, then it doesn't matter really how late you are because that's a huge factor. One thing that I, I, it, there seems to be somewhat of an appearance of Indiana uh, Coach Woodson has sometimes when they. They kind of get in, I don't want to say late, but like Xavier uh, Booker. Um, Mm -hmm. I I guess you could say they got in, I don't want to say late, but they got in late. They they didn't get, they didn't get in there as soon as Michigan state, um, but they weren't here then maybe uh, part of that, but you know, he ends up going number one rival says him number one in the country. Uh, heading to Michigan State. They also get Cohen Carr. Tom Enzo put together a class like that. So Maryland and, and and you know, we talk about Indiana. But the fans are all hyped up about Indiana next year and uh, being a favorite in the Big Ten along with Michigan and, and Illinois and, hell no, who knows, Purdue. But look what Michigan State's putting together. Look what Maryland's putting together. Uh, they're – there's the, the Big Ten. These teams are not sitting around with, with twiddling their thumbs. Um, so it, it, yearly recruiting battles are just going to become, I, I, I think, even more important for Indiana. Uh, they've got to start winning bigger battles. Not that they haven't won some, but I, they need. They still need to make that statement i think um that statement recruit um yeah i agree they, they, i agree i think you know um i think there's some important distinctions there too is i mean thomas is a hall of famer obviously established kevin willard's also an established college coach i mean he's done really well at seton hall um these are guys that have coached in college you know mike woodson still i mean for all all the good that he's done and all the good that he's yet to do, he's still not an established college coach. That plays a factor in kids' minds sometimes, you know? So, you know, I think Xavier Booker, that was just a victim of timing. Um, Cohen Carr, it felt like Indiana let off the gas a little bit when he got hurt. Um, and he's still just an interesting prospect anyways. I mean, to the, through the ceiling athletic, but he's he's still a little bit of a project on offense. So, um, you know, once he got hurt, I think they backed off of him and didn't really jump back in. So, um, but yeah, these guys around the league are, are not wasting any time. They're building big time classes. Um, you know, they're protecting their home ground, you know, so Indiana is maybe still a year or two away if they can, you know, in t- class of 25, if they can secure, you know, Cicely and Harrelson, I think you're going to be looking at a, you know, that kind of statement, like you're talking about, you keep two big time kids at home. Um, if they can keep a pipeline from Florida going with, you know, a lot IMG and Montverde, you know, that'll, that'll keep putting them in good shape as well. Uh, there's a great piece on uh, the Hoosier.com right now. Rob Cassidy, Rivals National 
uh, basketball recruiting analyst, breaks down Indiana's recruiting, the expectations for this year, how Woodson is seen out in what in, in the recruiting circles, um, uh, you know, how Indiana is seen out in the recruiting circles right now. Um, because Indiana has gone from a, a low point to a, I don't want to call it a high point, but they are very dry. They're they're high. They're on they're on high ground uh, right now already. In in two short years, or just one short year, really, under Mike Woodson, um, just been here one season. But the turnaround has been obvious. The recruiting they're still looking, but it, it's like people are the kids are still kicking the tires on Indiana a lot. It seems like. Yeah, and to me. That's okay. You know, I, I understand. I don't think it's a cause for panic for anybody. I understand people are going to be a little uneasy with how it's stalling out some right now. Um, but, you know, I, I, I just, I wouldn't be that concerned. You know, like I said, Mike Woodson has not really established himself yet. If they have a great season this year, you know, if they have 10 blue chip kids on campus and they beat North Carolina at home by 10, 12 points or something, or even if it's a thriller, um, that goes a long way. You know, it's, it's still, you know, you got to see, I think this season, you know, is going to be, I think how he develops this players this off season. So guys can tangibly see what he can do with a kid, how he, they perform on the court this season will directly impact, you know, 2024 and 2025 recruiting. I think we're just, it just takes time. You know, um, he, you know, didn't inherit a, you know, a bunch of misfits necessarily. He inherited some pretty talented kids, but, you know, he's still got to build this program up. It's not overnight. It, you know, it does sting when you have big time recruits that you think, you know, are in hand or you've got a really good shot with them and they go elsewhere. You win some, you lose some, you know, sometimes you're ahead, sometimes you're behind in recruiting. You know, it's not, it's not, um, you know, the end all be all. So he's, they still have a lot to prove. You know, I think, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind. They still have to go out on the court this year and perform and show these recruits. Here's what we can turn you into. If Jordan Geronimo and Tamar Bates come out, and there were, you know, double-digit average scores, and they're, you know, killing people like we hope they will. You know, he could so here's what I can turn you into. Here's what it will translate to on the court. Do you want to sign up for this? Right? Right now, he can just say, look, I took a team that was struggling. They still had a lot of the same struggles last year. And that's a personnel issue, I think. But, you know, once he shows, like, hey, we overcame those struggles now. We're a top-20 program again. You know, we can clearly turn out talent. I know what it takes to get to the NBA. That's a draw for kids to come. You know, it's, it's, it's just almost there, but not quite. You know, everybody wants it to turn around overnight. And in some ways it kind of did. But, you know, we lost at Northwestern this year. We got beat by 30 in the tournament in the first round by St. Mary's. And there's constant, you know, there's some factors there that are not so black and white. But that still happened. You know, if you lose in Evanston and you get 30 pieced in the first round of the tournament, those are headlines that stick. So, you know, you have to you have to show and prove this year, and then that, that'll build some momentum going forward. 